Thanks again to Bill. And so I'd like to introduce our next speaker, um, Nima Vaziri. He is a contributor to Counterfactual, and he'll be uh, discussing uh, generalized state channels, their framework, their technology, and so on and so forth. So let's hear one time for uh, Nima. All right, as I said, uh, I'm working on uh, Counterfactual, which is an open source initiative to make uh, building secure off-chain applications easier to build on Ethereum. And now, a little bit of a background um, on uh, our team. So I'm part of L4, which is a team that is promoting uh, the vision of Web3, which is essentially as you're all familiar with, um, decentralizing uh, many things that make sense to be decentralized. Uh, part of our uh, initiative is counterfactual, uh, others being the Stable Fund and um, uh, the ETH Global, uh, which is running hackathons across the world to uh, make more people familiar with like, just what crypto means. And uh, what counterfactual is, um, is, as I discussed earlier, is basically a lot of research that's been uh, developed so far, and I'm, part of the, I'm one of the engineers that's helping translate that into a practical framework for people to be able to use. Now, all right, I guess that's not working, so. Cool. So the goal of this talk is to go over a few things. Uh, I'm going to explain briefly what generalized state channels are and the context and the history of what channels are to begin with a little bit, uh, how counterfactual fits into the picture here, um, and what the state of the art is with respect to a demo which I'm going to be showing you towards the end of the talk. Now, uh, some context as to what channels are. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, like this construct, is basically uh, taking uh, payments that you can uh, send between users off-chain. Uh, so let's say we have Alice and Bob who send a deposit into a multi-signature wallet, and uh, in this wallet they have access to uh, some off-chain funds. And during the time that this uh, channel is open, they have the ability to transact back and forth without ever going back to chain, uh, and they can do this as long as they want. And whenever they're happy, uh, they can actually settle this back onto chain with the updated state of the channel. So um, basically, the only two uh, transactions that are required for this to work are a deposit and a withdrawal. So taking this uh, concept a little bit further is uh, basically the ability to do uh, arbitrary uh, uh, computations using state channels, which is a generic version of payment channels, because payments is only uh, sending money back and forth, whereas uh, being able to do a arbitrary state is uh, enabled by uh, Ethereum using the, the computation that, it, that we can perform. Um, now, uh, I, I put the slide together in direct contrast to show you what the difference is. So here we have balances that are being sent back and forth, and the only difference is effectively that instead of balances, now we have uh, state. So let's imagine that uh, Alice and Bob want to play a game of chess. Uh, they open uh, this channel and they put funds in it, but they can play multiple rounds of chess for different amounts, and whenever a, a game is won by Alice, she takes more money from Bob, and she can actually withdraw more of that amount than she put into the channel uh, at the end, enabled by the ability to execute uh, arbitrary logic by the contracts, obviously. So, and one more thing I actually want to mention is some uh, subtle confusion with uh, being able to use state channels is that there are currently uh, application-specific state channels that are in production today by a few teams. It's just that uh, they've been relatively siloed uh, in research and development, um, and part of the goal that Counterfactual and L4 in general uh, wants to achieve is uh, being able to uh, work on developing a standard to make it easy for people to use channels and not have it not have the research be siloed. So, what are generalized state channels then? If that was application specific state channels, generalized state channels effectively bring uh, the ability to. Uh, use this technique that uh, Jeff Coleman uh, came up with called counterfactual instantiation. And literally what that is, is just a fancy word for um, saying that if you have a channel open, then you can take the deposits that you had and you can actually allocate uh, segments of a deposit towards different applications that you want to use within the channel. So let's say uh, you already have a channel open and you want to play a game of chess, you can actually uh, 
use the portion that is not used towards a game of chess to open another game or another application of any, uh, of any kind and be able to uh, have multiple channels open within the same channel instead of opening multiple channels with the same set of users, thereby cutting the cost of deploying that multi-sig and uh, incurring the cost of depositing into multiple multi-sigs. And this is like a, a very powerful technique uh, for being able to use off-chain applications uh, because it allows you to uh, gain uh, instant finality. Um, and this leads me to a segue that is also another uh, common question is, uh, since channels are a layer two solution, um, and so is Plasma, which some of you who might be interested in layer two solutions in general might be attending and talk to you later, is how do channels differ from Plasma? Um, one of them is instant finality, as I said. Since you have a fixed participant set, um, users have the ability to interact with each other to uh, coordinate among themselves what the latest state of the channel is, and therefore they gain instant finality. And by that I mean you have the guarantee that the latest state is what everyone thinks it is, so you have consensus. So because you have that, uh, you have the ability to withdraw at any moment that you want. In comparison to Plasma, which is also another layer two solution, um, the operator has to coordinate the transactions that are signed by uh, the users who are using the Plasma chain. And you gain eventual finality with this, um, which as opposed to the channels which you gain instant finality with, with. but um, it's just some of the properties that I want to highlight because people do get confused sometimes about this. And if you want to go into more detail about the comparison between here, uh, there's a pretty good talk by uh, uh, Josh Stark from L4, uh, Making Sense of Layer 2, he, which he gave at DEF CON not too long ago. So given the context that I just described about the channels and the history of them and why they're hard to use, what is it at Counterfactual that we're trying to achieve? Um, firstly, I want to emphasize that it is an open source project. We don't believe that any tokens or any unnecessary bloat has to be integrated within, to, uh, within the protocols that we're writing and just basically the whole framework. Uh, we believe that uh, a lot of the things that have happened in the community and the ecosystem that allowed us to uh, be at the state um, is just because people want the uh, world to be in a better state. Um, and in alignment with that, we want others to be able to benefit from the work that we have also researched and put effort into. So our vision is to be able to have developers uh, building applications that are uh, off-chain than for that to be the norm uh, because of the properties that you gain from uh, having done so. So our mission is to actually build tools that will make it easy for developers to be able to do this securely and easily. So in part of doing that, we have actually realized that we do need new infrastructure. So we ended up building three new core layer uh, for that that will facilitate uh, channelizing apps. And uh, from top to bottom, I'm gonna be talking about um, how we have built an application library that will, enable, that will develop, that will enable people to uh, use channels easily, and by that I mean it abstracts most of the things away from the things that you should necessarily care about. Uh, you shouldn't need to care about um, what it means to install, uninstall, update state of channels securely, what are the protocols that go into them. Um, so this application library abstracts most of that away from you. You can just be able to say, hey, I want to install this application, give it some struct, and that's basically it for the most part. Now, this application library sits on top of this thing that we're, we're calling a node. Now the node um, is effectively running a robust set of protocols that execute uh, safely uh, the, the things that, are, that we discussed in the paper, which I mentioned earlier. And we gain security by having the state resolutions layer, which sits at the very bottom, which is actually the contracts layer. And that layer by itself is pretty complicated, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about that. I'm gonna refrain from talking about it. Um, but if you want more detail, you can actually check out specs.counterfactual.com or uh, we can talk later about that. But suffice it to say that uh, the protocols are all uh, trustless. So we don't assume that you have like necessarily any trust over anyone else. Now, I would like to show you a demo of where we are today with this uh, framework and how we can actually build applications way easier than ever before. And anyone can do this. So here we have, uh, let me see if I can make this big screen. Okay, cool. All right, 
so here on the left side we have a user who's already uh, set up with a channel and on the right side we're uh, creating another account for someone to be able to uh, use a channel as well. So we're just registering an account. Um, here we're authenticating uh, that we in fact do own the Ethereum address that we say we do and then we deposit some amount into the channel. Now we're just going to wait for the channel to be created and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this because uh, it's important to note that while, while I did say that you only need a deposit and a withdrawal to be able to interact with the channel, as of right now, you also need to be able to create the channel to begin with, right? So you need to deploy the multi-signature wallet that you're going to be interacting with. But uh, as of Create2, which is a new technology, uh, which is a new technique that was uh, merged into the Constantinople on Ethereum, uh, we can get rid of uh, this step as of now and make a better UX. So here we have the channel that's ready. We're going to deposit the amount that we said we would, 0.5 ETH. We confirm that. This sends it from the MetaMask wallet that you have into the channel that you just created. And because we're actually inter we are uh, interacting with the blockchain, this will take some time for the block to finalize and for the transaction to be included. So here you can see we're pending. And then later on when we have around this time, we're going to have our channel set up. So now we're ready to actually use uh, channels within, uh, use applications within a channel. Within a channel. You said it would create two that will go away. Sorry? So I'm gonna, I, I can address that at the end, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so here, uh, the first uh, user uh, proposes uh, second user to install a game. Second user accepts it. Now they're in a game with each other. They're going to play. And as you can see in the bottom uh, of the screen, uh, I'm showing you a console log uh, uh, of, the, of the local storage because I want to demonstrate that this is all actually, in fact, being held within your browser, and it's not anywhere else. So here, we played a game for 0 0.01 ETH. And the left side won. Um, you can see the balance is updated. And we want to be able to withdraw the amount that we updated to back to our uh, Ethereum wallet, or Ethereum account. So we're going to send the transaction. And another important thing I want to uh, emphasize here is that uh, the security that I was mentioning earlier is actually demonstrated here, because when you uninstall the game after winning, uh, this uh, what, what actually happened was both users signed the transaction uh, that, will, that allowed the multi-signature wallet to execute and transfer this amount of funds from the multi-signature wallet into the Ethereum account of the person who won. So, and, that, and that transaction is being sent to the network right now for it to be included. Uh, and in a moment or so, you're going to see the balance being updated, which is. So are you saying that was pre-signed? It was not. So like, what if someone chooses not to sign? So a part of our protocol is basically uh, uh, handling the deviations between the protocols. Uh, if someone chooses to not sign it, then um, you both have agreed uh, up to a certain state that, hey, like, this is what I want to do. And if your counterparty is uncooperative, you can actually like, leave the channel. You can, actually, you can leave the application or the state channel uh, with respect to the latest state that you both agreed with. So. Um, so the balance of the channel has been updated, and that's basically the end-to-end -end version of the demo that I wanted to show you. Now, how do I go back into full? Okay. All right. Uh, I want to just talk about a little bit about what happened here. Um, so here we have a, uh, what, we're calling, what we're calling the playground. Uh, and inside of this, we're running the node that I mentioned earlier, which is the middle layer of the stack that I was talking about. And this holds a wallet that has a unique mnemonic that has control of the funds within your channel. And within this uh, environment, we're running an iframe that contains a dApp that you have that is using the cf.js library, which is the application library that I was talking about. And this calls into the node to be able to run the protocols that I was alluding to earlier. And you can see the DAP logic is necessarily separated from the ch uh, channels infrastructure logic because we want to abstract that away from the developer. 
Uh, and as I said, uh, the two things that you require are deposit and withdrawal, and we're just going through MetaMask to do that. And as a side note, we are, in fact, integrating with MetaMask, which effectively means that uh, pretty soon, uh, MetaMask will have layer two functionality because it'll be ch channel com compliant, which we're actually very excited about. Here's a snapshot of the preview of what it could look like. And that's pretty functional today. We're gonna hopefully really be releasing it soon. And as I said, all the store, all the state is held uh, on your computer uh, locally. So this all happened in your browser, right? Um, but how did the two users actually play with each other? What does it mean to register an account? So me and Bob, or Alice and Bob, didn't actually create a channel with each other. They could because they're running the node and that facilitates the protocols that you need to operate between any nodes that are channel compliant. However, um, we are running through a hub uh, because it'll, it, it makes uh, easier, it, it makes the UX a lot easier. Um, if I go through the hub and a hub is connected to Bob, Alice, uh, Bob, whoever else, I only need to open up one multi-sig wallet with the hub and I can, in fact, create meta channels which will facilitate uh, channelizing applications uh, with any other user. And the hub is literally just like any other node. It's running the exact same uh, code that you have in your browser. And there's nothing special about it. So uh, another uh, snapshot of what's happening behind the scenes a little bit. The, there's two sets of protocols that are, be, uh, that are happening right now. Um, one is the state channel protocols that are being executed, like uninstall, install, uh, state modification. And these are effectively uh, modifying the state of the channel, which needs to be secure. Um, and a higher level protocol, set of protocols is the node, which is uh, making it easier for UX to be more palatable. Um, so if you want to uh, install an application with someone else, you want to propose that installation first, and then they can choose to accept it or reject it, which is what the node handles. And then this also goes through the hub. The hub, because it's running the same node again, has the ability to uh, basically do this virtually for meta channels. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. We don't need to run any special code anywhere else. And the app is collateralized. So if Alice and Bob are playing one ETH in a channel, the hub has to deposit two ETH to be able to uh, kind of balance out the meta channel over there. And that is it for now. I wanted to get back to the question I was asked earlier, um, which was about um, Create 2, I believe. Um, so that will, that will enable us to, because we know who the parties are and uh, what exact application is being used, uh, to deterministically compute the multi-sig address. So we know where it's going to be deployed, and we, we have guaranteed that we have guarantees that it's going to be deployed there, and only we have access to it, right? Um, so because we know that, we don't need to actually deploy it. So you can just say, here's the, th here's the address that you want to deposit to. They do it, and until you want to withdraw from it, only until then, you don't really need to care about it being deployed. So that is at least one uh, advantage that we gain from it, among many others. But um, that is it. If you have any questions, I can take a few. Other applications besides games? So uh, they both look like games. Anything else that's been deployed or yeah, yeah, shown yeah. interest? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, applications specific state channels, like Spank Chain, right? Um, payment channels, uh, for example, are a very good use case for uh, just being able to use a framework that handles arbitrary protocols, right? So that's, for example, subscription models, being able to rapidly send back and forth any state. Um, that's like a very, like, it's already proven to work. Um, for, or, or also fun fate, right? You can technically uh, uh, say that casino games are games, but it's facilitating like uh, a real business being run. It's not just like two users playing chess or whatever. So um, those are the two examples that I can think of right now. So in, terms of, in terms of payments and um, uh, payments and, and subscriptions, have you seen people coming to you guys looking yeah. for that, or what, what's the sort of state of the market there? Like, those uses are definitely understood. That right, right. Uh, Sure. Is anybody trying to do it? Sure. Uh, that's the thing. Like, it's kind of sad because um, conceptually, like this uh, offers some advantages, but because the tools haven't existed, 
people haven't really engaged with how they can use it. Part of our goal is to be able to like, kind of push that forward to see who can use it and what their use cases are. Um, another one that could work out, uh, given the right circumstances, is high, is high frequency trading, right? If you have like two parties who want to like go back and forth very rapidly, um, they could, for example, do that. Yeah. Anyone else? Any other questions? Uh, I was just wondering, could you elaborate on the MetaMask integration and what that might mean for DAP developers? Uh, sure. Um, so the node that I was talking about, uh, that node is effectively what's going to be running in uh, MetaMask. So the DAP that I showed you as well, uh, that doesn't have to, if, if once we have the full integration in place, you don't have to go to any specific environment like the playground that we have. Any DAP can actually say, OK, I'm going to use CF.js, and I'm going to uh, say, I'm going to send messages to the node that's going to be exposed by MetaMask. Um, so it's, like, it's actually very little work for us to be able to make that work. Um, yeah, basically. Any other questions or? Okay, so let's have another round of applause for Nima. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay.